welcome you all for the lab session of bond characteristics of pre-stressing strand. I am Prabha Mogandas, working in the area of bond performance of pretension concrete systems in building technology and construction management at IIT Madras. Nowadays, we use a lot of pretension concrete members in bridges in the form of girders, high rise buildings in the form of slabs and railway sleepers etc. For any systems that involves two materials, it is important to evaluate and understand its bond behavior to ensure its structural performance. This test method is based on the standard ASTM A1081 with a slight modification required for pretension concrete systems. Because the ASTM A1081 suggests the use of unstressed strands in cement grout, which is typically for the post tensioning scenario which suggests the use of 450 mm long cylindrical specimen with 125 mm diameter. In case of pretension concrete systems, you need to transfer the stress from the stand to the concrete. To transfer the stress from the stand to the concrete, you need to have transmission length from both ends. So for a particular strength of concrete and the stress applied, you need to determine the transmission length required and depending on that, you need to choose the embedment length of the specimen. So by considering the transmission length for this particular grade concrete used here, we used M50 grade, which is typically used for sleeper, railway sleepers in India. So we have chosen 1 meter long specimen for this particular grade and the stress applied. Now let us see the significance and use of this test method. So said, we use pre-stressing strand in both pretension concrete systems and post-tension concrete systems. So especially if in pretension concrete systems, the bond plays a major role we expect the strand to transfer the stress from the strand to the concrete by the bond. During the manufacturing process and handling uh, from the uh, industry, manufacturing industry to the site, the surface of the strand could be altered which will be influencing the bond also. So as I mentioned, due to these reasons, we need to ensure the strand is in good shape to bond with the surrounding concrete. So let me explain the significance and use of this method. So we use pre-stressing strands early in pretension concrete applications as well as in post-tension concrete applications. Especially in pretension concrete system, the strand is expected to transfer the stress by bond to the surrounding concrete. However, the bond ability of the strand can be influenced during manufacturing processes, subsequent handling and storage conditions. Hence, it is important to evaluate the bond between the strand and concrete as a qualifying test to ensure its structural performance. So this is all about this testing. So let me explain the specimen preparation for this test. We have taken the strand samples as a received condition and we have placed a 50 mm long PVC pipe at the live end as a bond breaker to prevent the contact between the strand and concrete which will help us to reduce the stress concentration during the pullout test. Then stress will be applied on the strand using the hydraulic jack for the required initial pre-stress, typically it will be 70 to 80 percentage of its ultimate tensile strength of the strand. Once the strand, strands are stressed, we pour the prepared concrete on the mold. Then after 24 hours, the specimens are demolded and allowed to gain its design strength. The stress from the strand to the concrete will be transferred once the concrete has attained its sufficient strength to take the transferred stress. Typically, when the concrete attains its 60 percentage of target strength, stress will be transferred. Once the stress is transferred, specimens will be cut at the end and are allowed to cure for 28 days. Then we will take the specimen for bond testing. Let me explain the bond test setup that we have here for this testing. Here we have 1.5 meter long pullout frame, especially designed and fabricated for bond testing of pretension strands in concrete at IIT Madras. We have mounted this pullout frame on the MTS universal testing machine. So we have gripped the top portion of the pullout frame on the top crosset and it is gripped here using the hanging rod and at the end of the hanging rod we have given the shivel kind of arrangement which will enable the frame to rotate during the testing if there is any torsion to release it. Then we will mount the pullout specimen here. So now we are going to place the specimen on the frame. We have this 350 mm more exposed strand at this end and 150 mm exposed strand at the other end. So this end will be placed at the bottom and it will be gripped and that will be on the top which will be kept free. And we have two LVDTs to be placed one at the 
bottom of the strand or the live end another at the free end of the strand at the top to measure the slip of the strand with respect to the concrete and these LVDTs will be fixed using the LVDT holder. test specimen on the frame and place the L1 LVDT at the loaded end it is called live end where load will be applied and one, another LVDT at the top free end and the specimens are uh, whitewashed using uh, past of Paris to observe any crack developing during the flow test. Now let us move on the testing. So we have connected the uh, LVDT to LVDTs and the load cell of the testing machine, actuator of the testing machine to the external data logger system where the data will be recorded during the testing. So once those setups are done, we have a customized test program for running the pullout test for pre-stressing stands. So these are the procedure for the test program and before starting the test ensure that the LVDT's positions are at 0 if not offset the reading to make it 0. So this is the test program customized for full test of pre stressing strands. So where this program is based on closed loop testing where load will be applied at the rate of 2.5 mm per minute. Now we have started the test, the test is running. So here you can see the load versus the displacement. Now the puller test is over. We have observed strand rupture at the bottom. Because when we test this 1 meter long pullout specimen, the load resistance to the slip will also increase. So the member will experience more load and it reaches its ultimate strength of about 35 to 40 kilo Newton. So once it is reaching its ultimate strength, we will observe such strand rupture failure. And also we have observed almost 8 to 10 mm slip before it fails. So now this region is the live end where we applied the load and here you can see the strand rupture when the strand is reached to its maximum capacity it has broken and during the low testing we have observed concrete crushing or shortening at this region where we apply the load and here in this region you can see some amount of concrete crushing and slip 
and also you can see the bond breaker placed inside the PVC pipe and here we absorb almost 8 to 10 mm slip. So you can see the marker draw placed before placing the specimen for testing and after testing you can see almost 8 to 10 mm, it is almost 1 cm slip occurred due to the pullout test. From this test method we will obtain the load versus slip behavior for the pre-stressing strands in concrete. Based on this we can determine the bond stress slip behavior, bond stress can be computed by dividing the load by the embedded area of the strand inside the concrete. Typically bond strength is computed as bond stress corresponding to 2.5 mm slip at free end of the member as suggested by ASTM 1081. Also researchers have used bond stress value at the peak or peak bond stress value will be taken as bond strength of pre-stressing strand in the concrete. That is all about the bond characteristics of pre-stressing strand in concrete. From this test method we have learned how to obtain the bond stress slip behavior for pre-stressing strands in concrete to determine its bond strength. Thank you.